denied women the right to vote. And the struggle then lasted for 72 years. It took them 72 years for women to get the right to vote. But um, it was that Declaration of Independence, and they used the Declaration of Independence from our country as the template for their own Declaration of Independence. And I hope that we are able to galvanize people who know deeply in their hearts that the current system is deeply flawed and has to be changed. Voters have to have choice. One um, Green Party member told me we were in the store shopping and he said there's nine different varieties of Oreo cookies on the shelf. But they expect us to confine our votes to two choices. It really doesn't make sense. And people in other parts of the world don't tolerate what people in this country tolerate. For example, when the presidential election was stolen in Mexico, Mexico City was shut down for five months. And in fact, I went to Mexico City not very long ago, a couple of months ago now, and um, was able to participate in a protest of 10,000 women, brigadistas, and they basically declared at that protest that they would not allow the privatization of Pemex, which is the oil company mm -hmm. in Mexico, and the electricity grid, which the, because of NATO, uh, uh, not NATO, um, NAFTA, um, the um, uh, U.S. is trying to encourage uh, Mexico to allow U.S. corporations to privatize the oil and the electricity grid. The Mexican people have said no. They're in the process of, of uh, carrying out, the opposition is carrying out a, rever a referendum. It's my understanding that they've had 80 percent uh, participation in this referendum. The referendum was declared illegal by the, uh, the, the, the political party that stole the election um, that is also allied with the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. um, but people participated anyway. Now, just imagine if we had the kind of electorate in this country that um, Haiti has, where they had their president stolen. Uh, this was, you know, conceived of in the United States, of course. But they had their president stolen by a huge power to the north and uh, put on a plane and barred from coming back into the country. The United States also sought to steal the election with the printing of 86,000 blank ballots, which they were going to count against the candidate who was the people's choice as Rene Preval. But Rene Preval is the president because the people said, no, you're not going to rig our election like that. And um, the people's demand stood. In Brazil, you've got the, for the first time ever, you've got the Socialist uh, Workers' Party in power, and that's Lula. In Venezuela, you've got Hugo Chavez. In um, Argentina and Chile and um, Ecuador and Bolivia, you have, and of course, Nicaragua. Daniel Ortega is back in Nicaragua. Um, and it's all because of the power of the vote. These people decided that they were going to have to participate in elections. They were going to have candidates who represented their values in the elections. They were not going to tolerate anything less than that. And they were going to direct their votes to the candidates who represented their values. And guess what? They got leadership that represents their values. Now, that can happen here in this country. But first of all, the American people have to understand the forces that are at play, have to understand that it is impossible to have something different. 
by doing the same thing. You have to do something different in order to get something different. And I hope that people will look at the example that I'm setting and understand that this is a uh, reasoned response to the current situation that is faced in our country. And I hope that people will also choose to regurgitate that blue pill that has been given to all of us, step outside of the matrix into the world of reality. Okay. I want to back up a little bit. Um, you mentioned you, you've been an uh, outspoken critic of the Bush administration from the very beginning of uh, from the, the response, election. Yeah, from the election. And uh, definitely it, it, it peaked during the investigation of 911. And yes. you, a lot of people may know you on YouTube from, uh, you. I think it's titled You Ripping Rumsfeld, a new one, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where you, where you, where you uh, uh, grill Rumsfeld in front of the Congress or whatever. So mm -hmm. um, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask with the Democrats taking control of the Senate and Senator um, uh, Nancy Pelosi saying that impeachment is off the table. Mm -hmm. um, how did you feel about that? I know that you and Nancy worked together for years while, while, while you were right. a Democrat. How did you feel? What, what, what do you think was the, the reasoning behind that? Well, so you know, I don't uh, try to understand why Nancy Pelosi has betrayed the values of the people who uh, voted for her to have the leadership position that she currently holds and the people in San Francisco who voted for her because I know that they don't share her values. That's why I'm supporting Cindy Sheehan. Um, uh, I, it is true that I worked and worked very well with Nancy, uh, but that was a different Nancy Pelosi. I think we have to understand that. And um, to take impeachment off the table, to continue to allow the war and occupation to be funded, to allow the Bill of Rights to be ripped to shreds. What kind of Democratic Party is that? It's not Democratic at all. So um, I'm glad that I left the party. I'm free now. And in fact, immediately after I got the nomination at um, the Green Party convention, I went to St. Sabina's Church in Chicago, which um, the pastor is Father Flager, Father Michael Flager. And he must have, I'm sure everybody in there thought that he prepared the sermon just for them. And so I'm not unlike them. I think he prepared it just for me because his thing was don't ever apologize for being free. He said, be radical, because if you're radical, that's when you demand things. And that's when you don't care what names they call you. You don't care about fitting in or looking like everybody else. You will do what it takes to get what, what, what you need. And when you are in the process of doing what it takes to get what you need, demanding what is due, that's radical. And he said you, no one should be afraid to stand up for themselves. No one should be afraid to be radical when a community is hurting. He said he's seen too much poverty. He's seen too many people digging in trash cans, trying to get food, too much homelessness on the streets to not be radical. He said it's time for us to be hungry for justice. So I'm hungry for justice and I don't mind being called radical. <laughs>